Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com My name is Jason Newland, this is Let Me Bore You to Sleep. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. Now, um, I'm going to read... Oh, basically, I bought a magazine called Woman's Own. <sighs> Got it about three days ago. It cost me pound twenty from Aldi. Uh, so what I thought, I'd just go through it. I've done this before. I had another magazine once. And I went through it. So I've got no idea what the contents are. I'm just going to pick little bits out of it and see if there's anything interesting. But before I do that, I just want to tell you about what happened during my sleepy time last night or, you know, Friday, my Friday sleep. So I know I sleep during the day ish. Well, yesterday I let off a uh, a flea grenade thing in my bedroom to get rid of the fleas. That's a lovely introduction. I sound really dirty tonight, but uh, so that was fine. I think that was yesterday. And then, or was it Thursday? Oh, I lose track. Anyway, last night, what I did when I went to bed, I thought I'll put Andre's water and his food in the bedroom and I'll bring him in the bedroom with me and close the bedroom door. I let off two of those grenade, flea grenades, in the living room, because it's it's bigger than the bedroom. Close the door, close the windows and all that stuff. And I left it, that was about five o'clock in the morning. Ish, about, yeah, about about five o'clock. And It's really weird because Andre was okay for a while. I slept on my bed. And it's not hugely comfortable for me because he takes up a lot of the bedroom. Which is weird considering how little he is. But he proper spreads out, you know. He hogs the bed covers. And then... I got up probably, I think it was about nine o'clock. And I went into the living room, opened all the windows uh, to let the air, you know, the air in, let the room air itself. And then I closed the living room door, came back into the bedroom. And this disturbed Andre. And he started scratching at the door to get out. And it seemed, which is really strange, it seemed like he was trying to like get out because he's thirsty or hungry. I said to him, what are you doing? Your food's in here. And for the first time, I saw, I saw the pride side of him, because he, he moved away from the door, walked to the other side of the room and just did something, I don't know what he was doing. 
I laid down, went back to sleep, or, you know, closed my eyes. And I saw him creep up to the food and start to eat and have a drink. He didn't know it was there. Because I put it in there when he was asleep. He must, he didn't realise that I'd moved his food and water into the bedroom. Because he was asleep on the bed. And then when he woke up at nine, he was suddenly, you know, he wanted to go and have a drink and have something to eat. So he was scratching at the door. Then when he realised the, f- the food was in the living room, in, in the, the bedroom, he pretended to ignore it. He pretended that he knew it was there all along. It's very funny. And uh, anyway, the whole the living room's all sorted now. It's been airing all day long. And I've not seen any any of those little fleas at all. Andre's not scratching really at all today. So I'm hoping that that's done its job. So getting rid of the fleas has cost me over £70 so far. But it's well worth it. It's, I can't believe that just those, there wasn't that many of them, but they really, they really wanted to stay for some reason. Anyway, that's their whole story. And I mentioned yesterday that I had a huge spike in. Uh, listeners like downloads I had 5,130 downloads yesterday or the day before yeah yesterday day before whatever Uh, Friday yeah so Friday I had 5,120 something like that so it's kind of Saturday's not over yet even though technically it's now you know when I released it it will be Sunday but it's still heading towards the 3000 so it's like oh so it's really weird like I was really pleased with it hitting 3000 and then when it went up to 5000 I started to I got a bit excited and now being I think it's probably about two and a half thousand at the moment it's like oh it just seems like a really small amount now when actually there's what's it yeah it's going to be probably over three thousand by the end of the day just been spoiled by that one day so I mean the stats are always a little bit less at the weekends anyway I don't know why that is actually perhaps people are just doing other things enjoying I don't know I'm not sure why but Monday to Friday uh always higher numbers than Saturday and Sunday generally but uh, there you go so what I'm going to do is look through a woman's own is it a woman's own or women's own I don't know so on the front cover it's basically an advert for Slimming World. But it, it's an article at the same time. And it says, I gave up chocolate and lost 11 stone. And there's a picture of the lady before and after. And then 
behind the scenes of Downton Abbey. Richard Arnold on set. Nothing has caught my eye yet. Uh, the greatest gift. My sister had my baby. I thought that was illegal. Uh, speedy pasta. On the table in 30 minutes or less. It's 30 minutes speedy. For pasta. I thought pasta was quicker than that. 30 seconds. Now that would be speedy. Oh look. It says here 25% off Van Dal shoes. T's and C's apply. UK only. I saw an advert the other day. Well, it's a few months back. And it wasn't Kim Kardashian. But it was... The youngest sister, the one that's a billionaire. Uh, is it Chloe or I don't know? But she, she's advertising this facial. She's having a. She isn't having a facial. She's like got this cream on, putting this cream on her face, um, and she's. It's basically advertising. I don't know if it's L'Oreal, L'Oreal, or. Because I'm worth it. I don't know which one it is. But she... Um, she advertising it. And it's just like a, just a standard advert, you know. And then right at the bottom, in small letters, it said... Chloe, or whatever her name was, does not actually use this product. Amazing. To be to be printing that that you don't use that yet still being able to advertise something that you don't use yet you're telling everyone that it's really good for your skin yet you don't use it. That's I don't know, it seems like me advertising some kind of abdam abdominal board exerciser. Me and my big belly wobbling around saying, yeah, try this. It's really good. When clearly I don't use it. Amanda, this is uh, I'm a Celebrity latest, latest. Amanda Holden. She's a, she's famous in England. And it says, will she tell all in the jungle? Tell all about what? What is there to tell? I, what, like what? About what? So she's going to be in I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here the English version which is in Australia the, it's based uh, the jungle is in Australia but I think other people other countries also have it as well so I'm wondering do Australia have it maybe they come there and they do it in a little forest somewhere in England. Nottingham Forest or something. No? Right, what's on the second page? Well, there's a big picture of a lady holding her boobies. Grab life by the boobs. So it's... Knowing your boobs could save your life, so grab on and check regularly. Search Copperfield Grab Life. It's a Copperfield, they're calling it. And there's a little handprint. So, it's, yeah, cool. 
but there's no website address, just search Copper Phil. I do wonder what that would bring up on the search engines though. The next page, Stacy Dooley sleeps over open marriage. Oh, okay, so Stacy Dooley, she does, um, she makes documentaries and stuff. And she was really popular. Her documentaries were very popular. Then she went on to come dancing, or strictly come dancing. And which is a very popular television dance show in the UK of England. And I'm guessing it's probably various versions around the world also and I think did she win it last year? I don't know uh, I don't watch it as it says here investigating reporter Stacey Dooley returns to the screens so it's about a six part thing about modern day living so how people live their lives and the first family she's going to live, go to visit are a Polly Mor Polly Morris Morris Polymerous Poly Polyamorous got it eventually Polyamorous relationship a thralpal they call it Stacy meets them uh to just find out what makes their unique marriage work so yeah I hope I've sold that to you if you'd watch that I think I've uh, there's a picture of them so there's a picture of this man and a woman sitting on a settee and they're holding hands and then there's the other woman or I guess is the third one in their marriage or relationship and she's just sitting on her own and it's also almost like the one that's sitting on a settee holding hands with a man she's smirking it's almost like she's smirking like <laughs> I'm holding look, look whose hand he's holding mm, not yours mine but I might be wrong there oh this is a brilliant offer get six issues of woman's own from one pound subscribe online at woman's own subs dot co dot UK forward slash one eight AA or call O three three zero three 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 one 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 three quoting code eighteen AA save up to fifty one per cent six issues. So are they every two months are they? Not every two months. I don't know if it's weekly or if it's monthly or what. Looks to me like it's weekly. So, and it's got a bit at the bottom. In your issue this week, celebrity gets the go get the goss from Nadia's family feud to relationship of the week. Oh, this is this is very bored, I must admit, reading this. On the cover, I'm a celeb latest brought men to hold and tell all in the jungle. So let me tell you about Amanda Holden. 
in the 80s, there was, um, what was his name? Very famous television comedian who was in a double act. Um, something in, oh, I can't remember his name, this is terrible, isn't it? But anyway, it would probably come to me at some point. He's very famous, like in England. And he was in a double act and his partner passed away. So they, he went out on his own and he did quite a few game shows and he was, he was top of the pile really. Les Dennis, that's it, Les Dennis his name is. So I grew up watching him on television and he used to do a character from Coronation Street and he and she used to say oh I don't really know and he used to do that voice because he was a not a ventriloquist um, you know a mimic kind of he uh, done, done impersonations an impersonator that's it and so he was in television for years and years and years and years he did the is it catchphrase that he did I, f I forget but he did um, he did this TV show which was it had two f oh, family fortunes that's it because it had two families um, playing against each other playing with each other um, on telly and they had, had they were given uh, questions for example uh, we asked a hundred people in the street what do you take on holiday with you and you know then they'd sort of say say what they'd take turns thinking of something and if it was at the top of the list it'd be ding but if it was wrong it'd go ah, ah, like that it's genius genius and although I still think Dusty Bin was really good but that was a different different program so Les Dennis did that for quite a few years. He did other things, and he was famous, you know, in in the UK. Very, very famous on television. And his marriage came to an end in the nineties to someone called Amanda uh, that I'd never heard of before, and. She was this beautiful woman. And it's really weird because the papers started questioning why how did Les Dennis get someone so beautiful and so much younger and or well, why wouldn't he? He was famous and rich and handsome man, you know, why why should he why wouldn't he be with someone, you know? I never quite understood why they were questioning in it he was a huge star anyway he uh, she kind of became famous because of him because of the, the marriage split which is kind of a weird way to get famous and then she I guess I think she was an actress or something and then she kind of did her own thing and for a long time now I don't know how many years it is she's been on the judging panel of the Britain's Got Talent right from the beginning I think she's been on it with Mr Cowell and yeah it's kind of 
There was a weird one. I didn't. I kind of didn't warm to her when I first saw her because, you know, I was a fan of Les Dennis and I grew up, you know, as a young lad watching him on television on Saturday evenings and it means something I think and he he did the I don't know if you see, extras you know Ricky Gervais he did extras where he made fun of himself and which is brilliant it was so funny and uh, I'm not sure what he's doing now but I hope he's well and I hope he's doing you know whatever he's doing and over the years what's really strange is Amanda Holden has actually got younger she looks younger now than she did when she first started doing the show and now she, I mean you know she's a huge star in, America, in in England as well now but she's done other things she did uh, I think she's done theatre and musicals and all kinds of stuff she's very talented and she's now on the radio as well she's got a radio show that she does um, I think it's in the mornings or something so yeah and she's got what's uh, quite unique about her she's got a cackle and she laughs so she's got she's got a real um, not dirty but she's got a sense of, she's got a real really good sense of humour uh, which I, I like so it's, she's she's very rude she's, she likes rude jokes and stuff like that so that's quite funny but I don't know what she's going to talk about in the jungle I mean unless they're hoping that she's going to give some secrets out about the behind the scenes of you know Britain's Got Talent I mean I suppose find out that Simon's actually really nice who wore it best see who's ce which celebrity nailed the khaki tend is it khaki or khaki khaki I thought that was another word for dirty protest oh ok on the cover features I gave, I gave up eating chocolate and lost a whopping 11 stone Okay. Another the greatest gift my sister had my baby. Again, I'm not sure if I really want to go there. And then what's it? On page forty-four, you'll never believe it. We went from school failures to success. And page fifty-eight is a debate. Is it selfish to elope rather than having a big wedding? And you know what? Those are the kind of things that I worry about constantly. So I'm glad that someone else is uh, covering that kind of stuff. I'm constantly thinking about that. You know, should I elope? You know, how would it affect the family if I turn up and say, by the way, I'm married? Would anyone care? Is it selfish not to get in debt by £20,000 just to feed people free food and give them a nice day out? I'm married. Yeah. Life and style. Treat yourself. Ooh, on the cover. New season trends to suit your shape. It's basically the magazines. It's a big advert, it seems to be, but there's a lot of adverts in it. I wonder how many actual stories there are that are not related to advertising. So the Stacey Dooley is about advertising her new TV show. The 
I'm Mr. Amanda Holden is advertising the I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out of Here news show. Um, to the Richard Arnold's exclusive Downton Abbey set visit. Again, it's advertising the new Downton Abbey film. I gave up eating chocolate. That's advertising Weight Watchers. Or is it Slim World? Oh, Slimming World. So it's advertising Slimming World. I wonder what the... Uh, is it selfish to elope rather than having a big wedding's advertising? I don't know, some kind of credit card company probably. Get into debt, yes. Ooh. I forgot that Julia and Nadia were sisters. Completely forgot. So there's a TV show in England again. It does seem to focus on English, UK programs. There's a lady called Nadia. Um, what's her surname? Sawalha. Sawalha. Swalla. Swalla. Nadia Swalla. Yeah. And she's on a program called Loose Women. She used to be in EastEnders. That's you know how I remember her from. And she was a really good character in there. And she's been on Loose Women for ages. But her sister was much more famous than her. Because she was in Absolutely Fabulous. She was the, the daughter in that. Her name's Julia. She's now 50, but Absolutely Fabulous was a huge, huge show worldwide, wasn't it? Sort of, America it was huge as well as in this country. So Julia was a, although she does look different now, I think, because she was quite young back then. She's 50 now. She was also in, um, Another quite a big TV show, but I forget what it was. But Absolutely Fabulous was the early 90s, wasn't it? So it's nearly 30 years ago, so she would have been in her 20s. Oh, look what this... Say what? It's a picture of Richard Maidley on turning down a place on Strictly. He says, I cannot conceivably come on in spandex and do plick kicks, flick kicks. Oh, this is funny. This is, seriously. Um, this bloke, Richard Maidley, okay. He, he used to be on a TV show. It was like the morning show, uh, Richard and Judy... This Morning, or something like that, I think it was called. Um, and they were huge. Like, it was, they were the biggest thing on daytime telly. And Judy Finnegan was his wife, and Richard Maidley was her husband. They did it together. And he was constantly making gaffes, like saying the wrong thing. And he became famous for it for just putting his foot in it. And it's almost like he switched off during the interview while he was interviewing someone and just started talking as if he was talking to someone else that he was interviewing. He's, and it was very funny to watch. Very funny. And that was probably the late 90s, I, I would say. Maybe early 2000s. And then they went on to Channel 4, I think. And they had the Richard and Judy show, which is basically the same thing. But I think this was on in the evenings or late afternoon. And uh, 
I used to love watching him because he was so funny. It was constantly, he just, it's almost like he was given a script, but I don't think he was. It's very funny. And recently, he's been um, standing in for Piers Morgan on the ITV news show, the, the, the morning show on television. And when Piers Morgan's not there, he seems to take the place sometimes. And he's trying to be f- f- serious. And he's another one that looks so young. He's got to be 90 now. And he looks so young. It's just that he, when, he's, <laughs> when he's on the TV show now, he tries to do interviews all seriously. And it's kind of, in some ways, even funnier now. Because before he was, it didn't seem like he was really there. It's almost like he wasn't really kind of aware of where he was. But now, it's... I can only imagine it'd be like... You know when someone's... If you're working in a place... Let's say you're working in an office... And the team leader job comes up... And a bunch of people go for that job... And only one gets it. And then that team leader is in charge of people that he or she's been working with for maybe years possibly that started after him or was even in the same training as him or her and then they come in on their first day so proud you know their little lunch box maybe some grapes back at crisps and a yoghurt and just Mr Man picture of Mr. Men on or maybe Scooby Doo on the cover of the pint of the lunchbox and they're so proud. And they sit in the chair, puff their chest out. Which isn't always a bad thing, but just like, oh so just you know it was a little bit like that when I was seeing him on, on the T V now. Almost like, you know, because Piers Morgan's known as being, uh, well, many things, I suppose, but he's known as being uh, an interviewer of serious subjects, I guess, like politics and stuff. It was so funny seeing him. Just almost like you know when you see a little kid walking around in their dad's shoes or the little girl walking around in in her mum's high heels and they've got tiny little feet but the shoes look like you know they belong to a giant kind of like that a bit like look at me I'm an adult I'm a real reporter. I'm a real interviewer. I want to be a real boy. So let's see. Strictly come dance in rehearsals kicked off last week. Rah, 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 rah. Um, nine months ago, Catcher 30 was spotted kissing celeb Sean Walsh after a boozy night out while Sean's actress girlfriend Rebecca Humphreys dumped him Neil forgave Katia who's Neil? oh okay that must be Katia's man but sources claim they struggled to get their six year marriage back on track oh wow an insider said the infidelity highlighted problems within the relationship and made it impossible. They are determined not to let their split affect strictly, the source added. So they're both dancers. Ooh, awkward. 
wow, I'm a year behind on this one. So they both dance on the show, Katia and Neil. They're married and then they dance with celebrities. Katia was with celebrity Sean. And she had a little kiss kiss, kissy kiss kiss. I wonder what that was like the next day after that was in the papers and Sean turned up for rehearsals. You right, Neil? Yeah. That must have been weird. Oh, here's a royal watch. We'd love to, apparently, apparently this, they're speaking for all of us here, we'd love to know what Her Majesty the Queen keeps in her handbag. But apparently, one thing she likes to take with her on her travels is a slice of her favourite chocolate biscuit cake. This is an exclusive. This is amazing. I can't believe I didn't know this. According to Her Majesty's former personal chef, Darren McGrady, if the Queen was travelling between residences and there was some of the cake left over, a senior chef would bring along the half-eaten bake so she could finish it. Ah. Mr. McGrady added, the chocolate biscuit bake is the only cake she goes back to every day until it's gone. And then done underneath this, uh, again, talking for all of us, which I guess, you know, can we try a slice? Yeah, cool. So what's next? This is page five. Emily attack. Uh, right, so this is... She's talking about a TV show she's on. Amy Hose. It's apparently is worth 4.1 million. Good for him. Mel B... Oh, it's saying that she could lose 57,000 in unsold tickets to her brutally honest evening theatre talk shows. Well, even that out with the amount she's getting from the Spice, you know, Spice Girls tour that she did this year, I think she's probably doing all right. Because the thing is, right, I won't have anyone attack the Spice Girls. <laughs> I'm a Spice fan. I am. And every single one of the Spice Girls is still famous. Still famous. Every single one of them can still... Okay. Um, not Dirty Spice. What's the... Sporty Spice... She's still a fan, but she, I've not really seen her do much lately here. She might be doing stuff other other places. I mean, she had the most successful um, singing career outside of the Spice Girls. But as far as celebrities go, Mel B, Scary Spice, she's done loads of um, panel shows, like these talent shows. <laughs> Andre, sorry about that, Um, Andre's been eating the Brussels sprouts again, so she's still famous, obviously, Baby Spice, Emma, she's, she's still famous from the Spice Girls, but also she does radio shows, and she's done lots of stuff. 
Who else is there? Ginger Spice. Is he still famous? I just don't know what she's doing. Because she left the Spice Girls, didn't she? So I don't know if she's even in the Spice Girls anymore. And then who's the other one? Uh, Posh Spice. I mean, she's probably the wealthiest one out of all of them because being married to her husband, who's famous, worldwide famous, or David Becks. So, and she's got a fashion, she, she's got a fashion line and all that stuff, but she didn't join in with the Spice Girls reunion. So I don't know why that is. I think maybe the contract did. She wasn't happy with the contract because it said she had to smile three times. It didn't, no, I'm not doing that. I used to fancy her. Out of all of them, she was the one I liked. I put why well, she's ginger. I liked. I think when it comes to fantasy, because it is a fantasy, if someone's like, uh, if someone's really famous and you fancy them, then it's a fantasy. It's not reality. And I think if, if something's fantasy, then you can play around with that fantasy. So I kind of created, I thought, Five females is too much. So let's just make one. <laughs> so for the voice, the singing, it's Sporty Spice. She had the best singing voice. I'd say the best talking voice. I liked um, Nasty um, Mel B, a Scary Spice. I quite like her, also like her personality. Posh Spice, I liked her face. I just always did, I always liked her face. But then, I liked the, the personality of um, Baby Spice, because she was cute, but she was always smiling, I liked her smile and I liked Ginger Spice as well so I kind of would mix her in there as well um, I wonder what part, I don't know but I just I, I just I was a big fan of them I liked I quite liked pop music I'm not really uh, kind of grungy into uh, deep political stuff, you know. I've, I like yeah, I like stuff that's fun. Although I'm, I'm not as in touch as I used to be. But, you know, we're talking, what, 1996 was the Spice Girls when they first um, popped. And I'd have been 25 at the time. So I know that I wasn't really, well, I kind of was their audience. I was a young man and I kind of... Yeah, well, it wasn't just me. I mean, they did appeal to like children and teenagers and stuff. But and there was the what was it? The women girl power. That's it, girl power. I was very, very up for that because I've always been. I always quite like the idea of equality for everyone. You know, regardless of anything just get rid of that silliness that silly 
attitude people have about difference. Like, what's that all that about? So yeah, I'm, I'm very much a girl power person. I'm very... I do sometimes think that I'm very, very... Not a, a hermaphrodite, but perhaps in my brain. I think I've got... So I might have, mind you, with my boobs as well. I've got some lovely little, lovely titties now. They're great. So I think maybe I've got estrogen, a lot more estrogen than perhaps an average man. I don't know. So I, uh, I don't know. I just I've always, well, for a long time, I've always kind of felt more comfortable being around women I don't mean in a like an orgy setting I'm talking about just in a like a like a college or just find us find it easier to talk to to ladies and 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 to men just I can talk to men as well although I don't really talk to anyone at the moment really but apart from you so I just I like the girl power plus I like their songs as well um, so 4.1 million for Eamon Holmes I didn't get very far in this uh, on part <sighs> I'm on page six now. Uh, this is about Amanda Holman. Amanda Holman? Holman? Holden. It, uh, yeah, I don't know. I can't just. I might read it another time. What other bits are there? I'm going to kind of have a little skimp through. Richard Arnold. The show of his experts with all the goss just for you. But they're just focusing on Downton Abbey. Which is... Great, you know, if you're into that. I did watch... Very first episode of Downton Abbey back in well, whatever year it was. I remember because it was Christmas, and I think it might have been two thousand and Twelve, I think. And it was on possibly Boxing Day. I just remember there was this young lad that was working there and he got accused of stealing something or whatever. And... I never saw it again after that. No, it wasn't a reason I didn't watch it. I just... just didn't get round to it, really. But it's, yeah, I remember watching it. I, I kind of thought to myself, I'm going to watch that one day. I'm going to watch it from start to finish. You know, watch the whole thing. Never have. I've tried to do that with The Crown as well. And it was funny. I did watch the first couple of episodes. And it is good and it's funny, but I just... There's so much competition for my attention with all these different television shows and box sets and internet channels and you know 
so much. Oh, look at this. Date night. A new book. Oh, this sounds like another advert. A new book has suggested that there are eight dates that could make your marriage last forever. These include having dinner naked, in brackets, yes, really, uh, discussing dreams for the future at dawn, so that'd be first thing in the morning, wouldn't it? And talking about um, whoopsie more. And this doesn't make sense. In, it says, was eager to put this to the test with the husband, but his idea of a date is something that comes in a box at Christmas. Um, is she being literal that it's actually a date, a box of dates? Or is she talking about uh, something you put batteries in? didn't say the name of the book I thought it would have done I was mildly interested oh I ate seven bars of chocolate a day so this is the lady that lost 11 stone by stopping eating chocolate well that's the thing isn't it it wasn't a case of oh so if I stop eating chocolate I'm going to lose loads of weight it depends on how much chocolate you're eating to start with if you're only eating one bar of chocolate or two bars of chocolate a day if you stop you're probably not going to lose 11 stone mind you if you weigh 70 stone then losing 11 stone I mean that's that's a couple of poos isn't it it's not it's not such a massive deal I suppose yeah, good luck to her. She's 60. And she said her grandson gave her the motivation she needed to change her ways. I say good luck to anyone that wants to do that. I mean, to be, what was she said? She was 22 stone, which is pretty much too big for anyone I suppose unless you're seven foot tall 22 stone is just for the health I, I look at that stuff from a health angle I think okay I'm 15 something stone and even that's probably a bit too heavy for me if I was 22 stone I'm quite short, I'm five foot eight, so I'm not the tallest young lady in the world. If I was twenty two stone I'd I'd probably be in a wheelchair. I mean literally I probably wouldn't be able to walk. It would be too much. But if I was six four, six five, or if I was six nine, I could hold that weight. And I'd still look big, but, you know, I'd have the weight, I'd have the, the height to even it out. I mean, I could probably go up to about 18 stone if I kind of decided to really hit the gym and eat properly and, you know, that kind of stuff. I could probably go to 18 stone and still look okay and be muscly or musclier because I'm incredibly muscly I am it's almost you know the other day I saw a picture of Arnold Arnie you know Arnie back in the days when he was uh, Mr Olympia and I swear 
if you replaced his head with my head on his body it would be ridiculous so I don't mind I quite like I don't want to be light I don't think it would suit me now I don't think I'd be able to get down to you know the last the, the lightest I've been pretty much in the last 20 years was 11 and a half stone back in 2004 and I was on a vegetarian diet and I didn't eat I went for a period when I didn't eat any chocolate I just I was working out I was doing Wing Chun Kung Fu I had quite a physical job uh, for a bit but The only thing I liked about it, it was, was, I was standing in my job because I got a new job in a sales place. I just remember this day. I don't know why. I just remember it. And I'd only, I'd finished the training, and I was working in the new bit. It's basically all new people worked on this particular desk I think it was raining outside and there was hardly anyone in the office and people were just walking out and I think the phones might have been turned off or something, I'm not sure what was going on and I put my hands down my trousers just down the front um, where the the waist is you know, the the like the elastic kind of bit and I hadn't realised how slim I was and it felt really nice and I thought oh I like this I'm really slim for the first time because before that I was just wearing jeans and I I wasn't um, taking much notice of what I was wearing I always wore clothes um, you know, it's, it's quite difficult to walk through town wearing a towel without getting arrested. So, and I put my hands just down a little bit, just kind of, you know, where your where your trousers are, where the basically your trousers button up, and my hands just slid down there so nicely, and I thought, this is nice being slim. And then I thought to myself, I wonder how long that's going to last. And two months later, I was sitting there in my desk, at the desk, at work, thinking, do you remember when I was slim? (laughs) Because sitting down all day doesn't kind of do the job when it comes to, you know, being slim. I know some people can do it, but I, even though I was walking and I was, you know, doing some exercise, it just, the weight went on. But I never got really heavy. You know, even when I started my university course in 2007, I was 13 and a half stone, I think. 13, yeah, about 13 and a half. Now I'm probably about 15 and a half. Something like that, I don't know. So I've not put that much weight on. But I do remember when I first hit 14 stone and I was I was a big, bloated, just, I felt ill. I literally felt unhealthy. And even though I'm a lot heavier than that now, I don't feel unhealthy physically because I've, I you know, do do some exercise and do weights and I've got a punch bag and stuff. And that's really weird when I, I remember weighed myself. I said weighed, and I was in shock. It's like, oh my goodness. I'm officially 
huge. So yeah, being 22 stone is good f- good for her for losing the weight, just f- just for health wise. Because yeah, I don't care what people weigh and what people look like. Zero interest in that. Um, it's no one else's business. However, I do like to. She's got such a happy face there. You know, she seemed quite pleased and good on her. If she's happy, and if she was happy at 22 stone, going up to 30 stone, then good luck to her as well. What does it matter? What's the other thing I was going to say? Oh, yeah. Um, Wow. Again, it's like this, it's an advert. But it's saying, who wore it best, khaki or khaki? Which celebrity nailed the latest look? Oh, okay. I was looking at all the others and I wasn't really that interested. Then I saw someone that, um, she looks different, but it's Jessica Alba. Um, she does look different. The thing is with a photograph, you can just make any, 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 take a picture of anybody and they can look so different from the next second when you take another picture. Almost like a different person. Especially if you make faces or, I mean, she might have, she might have been farting when that picture was took. Letting out a little bit of wind, she was outside, probably thought it was safe, didn't know someone was going to take a picture. She looks like it's a concentrated fart as well. Like one of those that you're not sure, not really sure, so kind of making sure that just the gas gets out. (laughs) You know, muscle control and all that. It says here, Jessica Alba, 38. Can't believe she's only 38. She seems to, it's like she's been around forever and ever. She must have... She must have started really young. Because she was in, was it Dark Angel? In the early 2000s. Because I used to watch it. And. That's nearly 20 years ago. Literally. Is. 17 years probably. Which means she would have been, what, 21 at the time. Wow. And you've got Lisa Snowden. Gwyneth Paltrow. I do like Gwyneth. Louise Redknapp. And Kirsty Allsop. So I don't know if you, not everyone's going to know these people. So if you're listening in America, because you you know who Jessica Alba is wherever you are, I imagine, um, being like a film star and that. But Lisa Snowden, I don't know what what, what was she, was she a, not a waitress? Was she an act? She was a model or I'm not, I'm not sure what she what she did. I know she's famous here, but I don't know what she was famous for. Um, I think she was a model, I'm pretty sure, like a long time ago. Gwyneth Paltrow, actress, to the worldwide, because she was in the Iron Man films, wasn't she, I think. Louise Redknapp, 44. So she was in 
it's this terrible, I can't remember the name of the, the group, the girl, the girl group that she was in, was it Eternal? And she was in that group, so that's how she became well known in England. And then she married a very famous footballer. And when she left the group, she had her own solo career. She had very, a lot of success there as well. And she was kind of on... I think that was the times when we had all those lad mags um, that weren't naughty, they weren't top shelf. Um, they were kind of a bit like Sports Illustrated where it was... You know, a lot of like bikini and there was, I don't know. I used to read them, but only at work because I worked in an office and it was it was a very laddish behaviour kind of environment. So it was all these magazines, lad, uh, loaded, um, was it Maxim? Was that one? And... But they were very popular. Now, I don't, I'm not sure if they're even made anymore, but. And they used to have. They used to be a lot of. Uh, a lot of things about sport and cars and then. Uh, women. It was very much aimed at men, these. these what well, they were lads' mags. And then you got Kirsty Olsap or Olsop. 47 and she's she's famous in England for she had did she like sell properties or something or was it renovation properties something like that and then she went on and did other things she does this thing at Christmas where like making Christmas decorations and stuff like that and I love her do I love her so I just there's something about her I've always liked her just the personality um, yeah she's just there's something really nice about her the way she presents and having her do stuff at Christmas is almost like there is that festival feeling with her um, yep, I love Kirsty Olsop and Jessica Alba. I'll always, I'll always love Jessica Alba, but that was for different reasons. I just, she when she was in Dark Angel, it was such a good show. I don't know if anyone else, don't know how popular it was like around the world, but she was so good in it and. There was this romance going on between her and her boss. Uh, the, the kind of it will they, won't they? Um, bang, you know. So it's it's very. And then of course she was in. I mean, Sin City can't be the her most famous part, can it? It can't be, surely. She's been in quite a few films. But she became really well known because of that being in Sin City, the film. Well, and the second film as well, of course. She's also in Machete. Machete. Anyway. I didn't get very far with the magazine, but I just found it really boring. I mean, really. Oh no, there's a there's an article about waxing. Damn it, I missed it. That's oh, too late now. Uh, I'm going to read it myself. So take care and I'll speak to you next time.
Remember to be kind to yourself. Lots of love.